Hello everyone. In today's course, we will be solving more advanced equations that contain complex numbers or have complex roots. In the previous one, we have seen definitions and identities and basic relations. We also had some simple examples. Now we will move towards more advanced examples. And after more than a few examples, we will be uh, defining complex vectors and complex matrices. And this will be a brief introduction to these complex vectors and matrices. If we feel the need, if there is demand from our students and professors, then we can make a separate chapter for complex vectors, matrices, and their operations. We are starting with a relatively easy question. Suppose that x and y are uh, real number variables. The question is 4x plus 3y plus 4i times i equals to 21 plus 7i. And the question asks us to evaluate y. For two imaginary numbers to be equal to each other, their imaginary parts must also be equal and uh, eventually their real parts must also be equal therefore uh, we do not have to deal with 4x and 21 on the other, other hand of the equation but we could just simply uh, set 3y plus 4 equal to 7 so since the question asks us to evaluate only y, we don't have to look for the values of x. This is why we proceed with 3 times y plus 4 equals to 7. And here we get 3 times y equals to 3 and y is found as 1. A simple one, but there is a good trick to memorize for future problems. This is also a similar one, but requires some more attention. If x and y are real numbers, and 3x plus y plus 2x plus 2yi is given equal to 13 plus 10i. So, what is z if z equals to x minus 4y? So, as you see, uh, it's quite longer and more complicated but the essence of the question is similar to solve for z here what's different is we have x y and z to solve for z we must first solve the equation with the complex number for x and y we therefore need to match up the real portion of the complex number with the real portions of the expression and the imaginary portion of the complex number with the imaginary portion of the expression. In the previous question here, we only had to deal with y and we do not care uh, what x would be. But here we have to evaluate for both. And we therefore obtain 3 times x plus y equals to 13 because uh, on the right hand side of the equation uh, the complex number is 13 plus 10i so the real part is 13 and uh, this is why we get 3x plus y equals to 13 and on the other hand we get 2x plus 2y equals to 10 so and th the reason is that uh, on the right hand side we have only 10 for the imaginary part of the complex number and on the left hand side we have 2x plus 2y in the parenthesis next to the i so we get 2x plus 2y equals to 10 here we can use a straightforward substitution by noticing the first equation can be written as y equals to 13 minus 3x and substituting it into the second equation we can therefore solve for x so in the second equation we can replace y actually 2y with 2 times 13 minus 3x so we get 
2x plus 2 times 13 minus 3x equals to 10 and 2x plus 26 minus 6 x equals to 10 here we get minus 4 x equals to minus 14 and we get x equals to 4 now with this x value we found it we can solve the equation for y and let's look at the uh, given part here Here we get 3 times, since x is 4, we get 3 times 4 plus y equals to 13. And this comes from uh, this part, this uh, equation, 3x plus y equals to 13. And we just write uh, the value of x inside the equation. We get 3 times 4 plus y equals to 13. Then 12 plus y would be 13, and y is found as 1. Since we now have x and y, we can now solve for z. And z is already given as x minus 4y in the question, so we just put a 4 as x and 1 as y, so we get 4 minus 4 times 1 equals to 0, and the final answer would be z equals to 0. This is a bit longer, but the main idea is the same. Let's look at another question. Now we have a uh, power of i inside the question, so we have to pay attention. Solve for x if x equals to 4 times i squared plus 3. It's a simple one. You should go about this problem just like any other algebra problem by following uh, the order of operations. We will first evaluate what is inside the parenthesis, so it's i squared plus 3. And at this point, we need to remember the properties of i, the power powers of i, which we have seen in the previous video. So i is basically square root of minus 1, and i square is a square of square root of minus 1, which is minus 1. And i, i cube is minus square root minus 1, and i to the fourth is 1. So if you memorize this pattern, then it's quite easy. So i squared plus 3 would be minus 1 plus 3, and this is only 2. And the original expression becomes x equals to 4 times 2, which is 8. The question asks us to evaluate and simplify i plus 3 squared. The first step is to evaluate the expression by foiling the expression. This is simply the opposite of factoring. So here we have to uh, distribute the multiplication inside the parentheses. i plus 3 squared can be written as i plus 3 times i plus 3. So if we distribute the multiplication inside the parentheses, we get i times i plus 3 times i plus 3 times i plus 3 times 3, which will be i squared plus 6i plus 9 eventually. So, now we need to simplify any terms that we can by using the properties of i. Um, and this property is particularly the power property, the famous pattern of powers of i. Again, we get i equals to square root minus 1 and i squared equals to minus 1. So, we eventually get the expression as minus 1 plus 6i plus 9 and which will turn out to be 8 plus 6i. So the result is a complex number with real value 8 and complex value 6i. The question asks us to solve the equation for variable z, where 6 plus 3i squared equals to 4i minus 30z. In order to solve this problem, we need to first simplify our equation. It looks quite complicated right now, but we can use the techniques we have used in the previous questions. The first thing we should do is distribute the square operation. Uh, so basically means making the multiplication, which gives us 
6 plus 3i times 6 plus 3i equals to 36 plus 18i plus 18i plus 9i squared. So we get 36 plus 36i plus 9i squared. So we already know i squared is actually just minus 1. Therefore, the result becomes 36 plus 36i minus 9 and we get 27 plus 36i. Now all we need to do is solve for z in the equation. So we get 26 plus 36i equals to 4i minus 30z, which gives us 27 plus 32i equals to minus 30z. And therefore, from here our solution would be z equals to minus 27 minus 32i over 30. So you can make this uh, division on real and imaginary parts or leave it like that. Another quite different question is coming. Question asks us to solve for A and B. And the equation is A times I to the 93rd plus B times I to the uh, 35th plus a times i to the 24th minus b times i to the 86th is equal to 40 plus 20i. So here, again, we should remember the magical pattern of i's powers. i square is already minus 1, and i to the third uh, which is i cube is i squared times i so we get minus 1 times i which is why it is minus i i to the fourth is i squared times i squared which is minus 1 times minus 1 and it is 1 and i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i which is 1 times i which is uh, i and i to the sixth similarly is i to the fourth times i square which is one times minus one uh, which is eventually minus one so the powers of i are cyclic this means that we try to figure out the value of an exponent of i we can ignore all the powers that are multiples of four because they end up multiplying the end result by one and therefore we don't have to do anything uh, if uh, the exponent if the power is a multiple of 4 and if not we have to divide the 4 and look for the remainder so what we need to do for the question is to check if the exponents are multiples of 4 if not what is the remainder if they are divided by 4 so 93 can be written as 92 plus 1 because 92 is a multiple of 4 so the remainder would be 1 and 35 would be 32 plus 3 and 24 would be 24 plus 0 we do not have any remainder because we can directly divide 24 by 4 and 86 would be 84 plus 2 and uh, Next, in the next step, we get a times i to the 92nd times i plus b times i to the 32nd times i cube plus i times i to the 24th times i0 or you can omit this uh, i0 minus b times i to the 84th times i squared and to proceed further we can just substitute these uh, exponents with i to the fourth so the equation becomes a times i to the fourth to the 23rd times i plus b times i to the fourth to the eight times i cube plus a times i to the fourth to the sixth times i to the zero 
minus b times i to the fourth to the twenty-first times i square. And we get a times one times i plus b times one times i cube plus a times one minus b times one times i square. So if you replace i cube with minus i and i square with minus one, we get a i minus b i plus a minus minus b and which is equal to ai minus bi plus a plus b so we should merge uh, ai and bi terms here so we get a plus b plus a minus bi equals to 40 plus 20i so now we get the uh, simple form because the elements on the left and right have to correspond so we cannot mix and match we get these relationships. A plus B must be 40 because they are the real parts on both hand sides of the equation. The A minus B should be 10. Mm, actually, they should be 20. So there is a mistake in the slide. Sorry about that. A minus B should be 20. And from here, uh, just because the imaginary parts of both hand sides of the equation must be equal so a minus b uh, times i should be equal to 20 times i so a minus b should be 20 that's written wrong here and from these two equations we get a as 30 and b as 10 in this question uh, it asks us to solve 2 times x squared minus 1 a polynomial, a quasi polynomial uh, term. Uh, 2 times x squared minus 1 equals to 2 times x squared plus 3. Uh, this is a very simple one. As you see, uh, we can subtract 2 times x squared from both sides. And uh, in this case, we get minus 1 equals to 3. Uh, which cannot be true in any case, so there is no solution for this uh, equation. So this is the trick part. It's it's very easy to solve the uh, equation, but there is no solution. Let's proceed. If x plus y i over i equals to 7 plus 9 i, a complex number, in the standard form where x and y are real what is the value of x plus y i times x minus y i so x if x plus y i over i is equal to 7 plus 9 i then we can uh, multiply both sides of the equation with i so we can get rid of the i in the denominator denominator on the left hand side and x plus y i becomes i times 7 plus 9 i and we get minus 9 plus 7 i and this minus 9 comes from comes from the uh, i times uh, 9 times i so i square we get i square here and it becomes minus 1 so this is why we get minus 9 and if we proceed more, we get, uh, now we should evaluate the given uh, term, x plus yi times x minus yi. And here we already know x plus yi from the previous uh, evaluation. x plus yi was found as minus 9 plus 7i, so we can do a basic substitution here. And we get minus 9 plus 7i times minus 9 minus 7i. So we can uh, distribute the multiplication terms and make the multiplication. And we will eventually get 81 plus 94, uh, which will be 130. This one is quite a bit different. 
says determine all the complex number z that satisfy the equation z plus 3 times z prime equals to 5 minus 6i where z prime is the complex conjugate of the complex number z let z equal to a plus bi a generic form of a complex number and then z prime would be uh, by the way uh, i have to state that sometimes especially when speaking slowly i use the pronunciation z for the letter and uh, especially when i'm talking uh, faster i prefer z so you can choose uh, whatever you prefer it doesn't matter they are both the same but I suggest you uh, having a consistent pronunciation, unlike me. And let z be a plus bi and z prime equal to a minus bi because if the it is the complex conjugate of uh, z. And let a and b be real numbers. So substituting z and z prime in the given equation. Uh, will yield a plus bi so in what we are doing here is basically uh, writing a plus bi instead of the z above here and writing a minus bi instead of the z prime here so we are just substituting the variables and we will get a plus bi plus 3 times a minus bi equals to 5 minus 6i as given in the question here we can uh, do the multiplication and we will get a plus 3a plus b minus 3bi equals to 5 minus 6i and after making the addition we get 4a so we have to after making the addition we have to uh, set real parts equal to real part and imaginary parts equal to imaginary parts so at this point we get 4a equals to 5 and minus 2b equals to minus 6 and a becomes 5 or 4 and b becomes 3 and if a is 5 or 4 and b is 3 then our original complex number z would be 5 over 4 plus 3i Another question asks us to find all complex numbers z such that 4 plus 2i times z plus 8 minus 2i times z prime equals to minus 2 plus 10i where z prime is the complex conjugate of the complex number z. So it's, it's a similar question but a more advanced example. Again, let's define a generic uh, complex number form for z and its conjugate, z prime. So let z be a plus b i, where a and b are just real numbers. Then the complex conjugate z prime is written in terms of a and b as z prime equals to a minus b i, just like the previous question. After defining z and z prime, we should then substitute z and z prime with uh, a plus bi and a minus bi in the given equation. So if you write a plus bi instead of z, we will get 4 plus 2i times a plus bi plus 8 minus 2i times a minus bi equals to minus 2 plus 10i as given in the original equation. Now we should expand and separate real and imaginary parts from each other. And if we get the parentheses, we get 4a minus 2b plus 8a minus 2b for the real part of the left-hand left side and uh, 4b plus 2a minus 8b minus 2a times i for the imaginary part of the left-hand side. And these are equal to minus 2 plus 10i. So the minus 2 would be equal to the real part and vice versa. 
because two complex numbers are equal if their real parts and imaginary parts are equal separately. Then we have to group like terms. And we get eventually for uh, 12a minus 4b equals to minus 2 and minus 4b equals to 10. So we should solve the system of the unknown a and b to find b equals to minus 5 over 2 and a is found as minus 1. So we can replace these a and b with the original uh, z and we will get z equals to minus 1 minus 2.5 times i. In this question, we have a polynomial whose uh, main variable is a complex number, z. So a polynomial of uh, p of z equals to z to the fourth plus a times z cubed plus b times z squared plus c times z plus d. So it's a polynomial where a, b, c and d are all real numbers. So the question asks us to find a, b, c, d. Uh, if uh, two zeros of polynomial p are the following complex numbers 2 minus i and 1 minus i so we already know that uh, the values of z where this polynomial becomes 0 there are uh, two roots for this polynomial defined in the question so in, since all coefficients of the polynomial p are real the complex conjugate to the given zeros are also zeros of p. So if you write uh, 2 minus i instead of z, so if we substitute z with this uh, value, we will get uh, 0. We can normally not write uh, <coughs> a polynomial of the fourth degree uh, in the factored form using only two roots. So we actually need four roots to write the uh, polynomial in the factor form. But the trick is uh, the com uh, since the coefficients of the polynomial are real, the complex conjugate of these values, I mean 2 minus i and 1 minus i, so if we uh, find complex conjugates of these values, these complex conjugates would also be zeros of p, so they would also be a root of uh, polynomial p. So in this case, <coughs> we get four different roots, and uh, this allows us to write the polynomial as in the factor form. So in this case, uh, using all four roots, uh, since uh, 2 minus i and 1 minus i are already given in the question and their complex conjugates would be 2 plus i and 1 plus i. So we can write the polynomial in the factor form as z minus 2 minus a in the parentheses uh, times z minus 2 plus i in the parentheses and uh, z minus 1 minus i in the parentheses and z minus 1 plus i in the parentheses all multiplied. After doing the multiplications and distributing uh, the operations we get for z uh, sorry uh, z to the fourth minus uh, 6 times z cubed plus 15 times c squared minus 18z plus 10. Just uh, the, the superscripts are written like uh, normal numbers, so just pay attention to this. It's not z4, it's z to the fourth. Hence, we can match uh, these coefficients we found for a uh, polynomial with the origi original uh, equation. So, a would be uh, z, z to the fourth doesn't have any coefficient, but uh, z cube has a coefficient called a in the original equation, and uh, for the calculated equation of the polynomial, we get minus 6. Hence, a would be minus 6. And for uh, z square term, 
the question gives b and we found 15 so b is 15 and similarly c is found as minus 18 and d is found as 10. This is our last question in these slides. It asks for two things. First, it, sa it says, show that the complex number 2i is a root of the given equation, which is z to the fourth plus z cubed plus two times z squared plus four z minus eight equals to zero. So we have to show that the number 2i is the root, so it makes the equation zero. And in, in the uh, b uh, part, it asks to it asks us to find all the roots of this equation. So for for the first uh, section, we just have to write two i instead of z because it is the, if it is the root, then it should give the result zero. So we will evaluate that uh, two times r to the fourth plus two times i to the third plus 2 times 2i uh, squared plus 4 times 2i minus 8. So we will check if it, if it is 0 or not. So 2 times i to the fourth would be uh, 16 because it will be, uh, we can distribute the power inside the parentheses. So it will be 2 to the fourth times i to the fourth and we already know that i to the fourth equals to positive one because of the magical pattern and two to the two to the fourth is 16 so we just multiply one with 16 and we get 16 and the same for the next term here we get uh, two to the third times i to the third so i to the third is basically minus i and we will get minus eight i it will be same for the next term. We will get minus 8 because i squared is uh, minus 1. Plus uh, 8i minus 8 equals to 0. So here we get eventually positive 16 minus neg uh, positive 16 minus uh, 16 which will be 0 and we also get minus 8i plus positive 8i they will be 0 also so the result would be 0 we, we can show that uh, 2i is the root of this given equation so for part b 2i is a root then uh, minus 2i should also be a root because uh, the complex co conjugate of the complex number 2i would be minus 2i and if you if you cannot understand we can make it more clear uh, because the generic uh, generic form of complex numbers are a plus bi we we can think this number as 0 plus 2i so 0 plus 2i is a complex number in the generic form and is the root of this equation so the complex conjugate of 0 plus 2i would be 0 minus 2i and shortly we can write it minus 2i so we don't have to write 0 in front of it every time so if 2i is a root then minus 2i should also be a root uh, because all these coefficients are real numbers this is uh, a must for this uh, statement so we get z to the fourth plus z cubed plus two times z squared plus four z minus eight equals to uh, multiplication of these roots z minus two i times z plus two i times a function that we right now do not know let's say q q of z uh, this is equal to when we make the multiplication this is equal to z square plus 4 times q of z and we can leave q of z alone in one hand of the equation and we will get uh, q of z 
equals to z square plus z minus 2. So we can uh, find the other roots of this equation and we already know that there should be four roots because it is uh, the original equation is the degree of 4. So two, two other roots exist. We, we already know two roots and two other roots exist. And the other two roots of the equation are the roots of qz which are found as z equals to 1 and z equals to minus 2. So they are uh, non-complex, uh, real roots. If they, if they wouldn't be real, we would get one complex number and it's conjugate, uh, complex conjugate as the other root. For today, we are done with questions and we will make a brief introduction to complex vectors and complex matrices. Complex vectors are the vectors whose components are complex numbers. And very similarly, complex matrices are matrices whose components are complex numbers. Here we see an example of a complex matrix. In the first row, uh, it's, it's a uh, two row, three column matrix. In the first row, we have J. Here we use uh, the J notation for, for the imaginary number I because uh, this is more of an engineering topic when, when we uh, talk about engineering topics and the application fields of complex numbers we generally prefer to use J in order to prevent uh, any possible confusion with uh, current I or other terms of physics. So when we are talking with engineering we call it J when we are talking in mathematics we usually call it I. So in the first row here we get uh, j, 2 minus j, and 1. In the second row, we have 0 for one term, and uh, 2 plus 0 0.5 j in the second column, and minus 1, minus 2 j in the third column. Most calculations of vectors and matrices, including Gaussian elimination, determinant, uh, matrix inverse, carry over to the complex case, so they do not require special treatment but we always should pay attention to the value of uh, the imaginary number especially powers of that imaginary number so briefly if a vector or matrix includes at least one complex term uh, then it will be a complex vector let's look at the euclidean norm of a real vector to understand how we will carry this feature to the complex vectors. The magnitude or the norm of a real vector is defined as the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of that vector. So let's take a vector 5 uh, with elements 5, 12, 13. The magnitude of this vector would be square root of 5 square plus 12 square plus 13 square. So it should be uh, square root of uh, 338 and which is if you if you use a calculator which will be uh, 18.385 and in terms of vector transpose we can write the norm of a column vector v uh, as square root of v transpose times v so this is the equivalent of this magnitude because multiplying a vector with its transpose would yield a scalar number. And let's look at now the Euclidean norm of a complex vector. And we will uh, shortly modify our previous real vector. And our new complex vector would be 5, 12, and 13j instead of 13. So the magnitude of this vector would be square root of 5 square. Uh, plus 12 square plus 13 j square and we get 25 plus 144 minus 169 uh, why we get 169 because uh, we can distribute the power square inside the parentheses and we will get 13 square times j square and we already know that j square is minus 1 
And if you make this uh, calculation with uh, 25 plus 144 minus 169, you will get a zero inside the parentheses, and square root of zero would be zero again. So let V be a column vector, uh, the five uh, with with the uh, rows five, twelve, and thirteen J, then. Uh, multiplying this column vector with its transpose would be uh, multiplying uh, the row vector 5, 12, 13, j with the column vector 5, 12, 13, j. And if we make this calculation, we will get exactly the same result. 25 plus 144 minus 169 equals to 0. So V is not uh, the 0 vector, but v transpose times v is zero so this is quite different and quite unique for these complex vectors but if you think about that this is a big problem so all complex if all complex vectors uh, norm uh, is zero um, then how can we uh, differentiate between different complex vectors so we we should not get zero as the magnitude for all these complex vectors we should define a better uh, magnitude or better norm to differentiate these different complex vectors so the correct way to define the magnitude or norm of a complex vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the absolute value of the components now it will make sense the magnitude of vector 5, the same vector, 5, 12, 13, j, should be absolute value of 5, a square root of uh, absolute value 5 squared plus absolute 12 squared plus absolute 13, j squared. Now we will get 5 plus uh, 144 plus 169 in the square root. And this will be 300 square root of 338. Because a vector has zero norm only if it is the zero vector. So the magnitude of any vector should be different than zero if it is not a zero vector. It's, it's very logical, it's reasonable. So let's define the conjugate of a vector as the vector obtained by taking the conjugate of each component. And as an example, one uh, a row uh, vector of one plus g and uh, three minus two j prime would be one minus j and three plus two j. So if we if we replace all uh, complex components with their complex conjugates within the vector, then we will get the con conjugate of that uh, given vector. In terms of the conjugate of a vector, the norm squared of a column vector v can be found as v prime transpose times v, and this will be the row vector of uh, x prime y prime z prime times the column vector of x y z, and we will get absolute x square plus absolute y square plus absolute z square. Let's look at the conjugate transpose. Because the operation of conjugate transpose occurs very often in the calculation of complex matrices, the conjugate transpose of a matrix M is called the Hermitian of a matrix. And we will use the notation M to the H for the Hermitian of a matrix. Let's look at an example and make it more concrete. We have a uh, tr uh, two by three uh, matrix with elements from left to right uh, 3 uh, 2 sorry 2 and 3 plus j and j and in the second row we have 1 minus, 1 minus j 2 plus j and minus j so the hermitian of this matrix would be the conjugate transpose of that matrix so it should be uh, a 2 2 times uh, 3 matrix uh, sorry three three to three uh, three to two matrix with three rows and two columns and from left to right should be two and one plus j 
for the first row, g minus j and 2 minus j for the second row, and minus j and positive j for the third row. So if you pay attention, these are just the complex conjugates of the elements in the original uh, matrix. For any complex matrices A and B, such that A times B is well defined, we have Hermitian of A times B equals to Hermitian of B times Hermitian of A. So this is what we have uh, all for uh, this course. Uh, the complex vectors and complex matrices are a very long, very detailed topic. So if there is demand, we can continue and make a separate uh, section for uh, complex matrices and their operations and their use cases. But for today, that's enough. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Take care.